Hey, welcome back to another Dark Souls 2 lore through. Um, we're gonna do some loose ends today. So, if you want to get on with the game, maybe skip an episode. Alright, so the first thing we want to do here... First of all, do we, does Melibeth say something different? The old women is yeah. long ago, but now they... I know we can kill her and get a weapon, but I uh, actually don't know if you can get that weapon normally, so I'll just keep talking to her. So yeah, there's an area over here um, which I didn't go because I would not have been able to uh, face what is making these tracks. But now I will handily face it. It's one of these hippos. Um, handily might be a uh, weird word. This boy, this Cyclops, he drops the stone ring, which... The, the beloved ring of the gallant shieldless Lothian, um, formerly of Ferosa, hits greatly reduce enemy poise. The effect may seem trivial, but for those who comprehend how critical it is to exploit a hole in the enemy defenses, the significance will, of this ring will be clear. Where else do we learn about Lothian? Maybe it was a... Uh... Oh, we didn't read Blades. The Ring of Blades is modeled after the Mad Knight of Alkin's weapon of choice. The kingdoms of... Oh yeah, we did. We did, we did. I'm sorry. I guess I didn't remember that first part. But yeah, Alkin and Ben are... Um... I don't know, a cool part of the story, so I wanted to include them. Uh, but yeah, we, we heard about Shieldless Lothian before. I just don't remember what item. So yeah. Um, oh, and we have a fragrant branch of your... I don't know if I want to waste it here. Well, let's see what we get. Because we have plenty of other places to go. Um, okay. Where, uh... Because, I mean, one way to go is the Shaded Woods, which means a fragrant branch of your but... Eh, let's just do it. Um, I have to go over here first. Now that we have an hour of time on this, we can just keep it lit. Take these... Take these guys out. Um, Cause it could be a meme, but I did hear that there isn't something you get from lighting all these. And maybe it's just a way that people troll people on Twitch, but I, uh, I like lighting things regardless, so let's do it. I'm expecting to hear like a Legend of Zelda. Yeah, let's do it. We'll get more. I don't think they can, like, make you, like, be trapped, basically. Maybe you get one for, like, going into this area. It's weird that they block off, like, a part of the tutorial, essentially. Yeah, so you find these guys in the Shaded Woods. Ooh, don't. Okay. Does that hurt him? Is there anything for me to light? Okay. Although these guys don't petrify you anymore, do they? 
Ooh, this guy's powerful, comparatively. Um, yeah, I don't know. They like, they don't curse you. They like, they have, there's like a stone. This is cooler area. I guess it makes sense. It's like a little bit more advanced. You'd come back at a later time. Ooh, and an Estus flash shard for your troubles. Is he gonna shoot me on the ladder? Interesting. Okay, well that makes it work with the right match of your. Wonder if there's uh, something cool here too. Um, I think that might be all of the light things to light. So, oh, I got invaded. By a by a NPC. Ooh. Is that the bastard sword? Huh. <laughs> oh, I guess that's what might happen when you light all of the flames. And then maybe this thing drops. Yeah, interesting. Good. Petrified something, nice. <laughs> they were a shade that came back to, uh, to drop it up here. I might as well do that. Might get something really cool. We also have a smooth and silky stone, which is a bigger version. A raw stone. It's cool. Channeler's trident. <laughs> Famously a rare weapon in the first game. Trident wielded by an old sorcerer, the tip is sharpened so smoothly that it suggests a degree of madness. Use strong attack to perform a power channeling dance, the madness of which boosts the morale of nearby allies. I mean, we can't not attempt it. Oops. Oh, that used up like a third of its durability. All right, well, that's cool. It's a nice little thing. Can I just get one of these at a time? Nope. Weird when they walk, my thing vibrates a little. And it's making weird like pitches. Oh, I thought I rolled.
like the the shade that comes when you light everything. That's cool. Um, well, I think I'm just gonna grab this and duck out. No need to, I mean, so there's a coffin over there and you can get inside of it. People confuse people for the longest time. It uh, changes your gender or your sex, maybe, I don't know. But it changes you from male to female. Did we get another fragrant branch of your? No, but we didn't read this. The lost sinner eternally punishes herself for the sins of her past. Yeah, well. I guess Isolith <clears throat> brought about chaos and Although it was tamed for a while, uh, eventually lost uh, control of it, so. However. All right, cool. Let's, um, let's go to the sh Fallen Giants. Uh, where, yeah, I guess it would be here. And we just want to grab a few things here. Not that big of a deal, but... Nice. That's what I want to see. One more parry. It's going really well. Alright. and attacks, so I'm just killing all these guys off. Alright. Huh. We can go down here, and in fact, we should probably grab a flame. I guess we should uh, do this too. There's no sense to not be human most of the game, and then when we can't be human, we'll do it at that point. This place has changed a lot down here. I mean, A, it's really dark, I know that, so I know that they actually like it. It's worth it to light your way. Oh, there's skeletons down here now. Okay. Can you parry with this? No. Used to be a bunch of old iron. I can't remember what they're called. Old iron guys. I, uh. Ironclad. Old ironclads. I, uh. I've seen people beat this and the first game without rolling, blocking, or, uh, yeah, like just positioning and, and, and moving, but no running as well, 
So are there no ironclads here anymore? That'd be interesting. Okay, there's these guys here still. Um, spin that you do. Oh, I tried to roll out of the way. Got some effigies up here. I don't know if there's anything else to light, so... Bastard search for free. Up here. In the new game plus to the original game, there was uh, Siegfried of Catalina, or some Catalina, was up on that thing and would invade as a red phantom and come attack you. Okay. I should start putting things in my uh, bottomless box. Leather whip, not normally used on the battlefield, very effective against bare flesh. Oh, we didn't read this. Crafted with animal bones, sorcerers, sorceries and hexes properly trained sorcerers receive their first staff from their master after reaching a certain level of accomplishment. Those without proper training must devise something of their own making. Old armor worn by ironclad soldiers provide high defense, but extremely heavy. One day, warriors wearing decrepit armor emerge from Drang Lake Castle and quietly assume positions amongst the royal army. Not one of them ever spoke a word or revealed the face underneath the mask. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll go find the not old Ironclads later. Okay, okay. Okay, maybe there's no other flame. to be a lot more of these guys. And then, yeah, over there. We were over there before. And seeing this now, I mean, it would make sense that we would have seen the same thing in Dark Souls 2, but in the original. But I, when I was there last time, I just thought the layout looked very different. I don't know why. Oh, cool. I was gonna say. Oh, we got the hunter's hat. Someone shooting at me. Oh, great. Come up here, armor Dennis. Okay. Okay. Soul spears. Okay, that's scary. There we go. <laughs> 
Ooh. I forget that um, healing in this game doesn't like fill up your health instantly. <laughs> So sometimes I take more risks with healing, like in Dark Souls 1, which I gotta get out of the... the... get out of the habit of doing. Alright. It is feeding time for my cats, by the way, so... They're gonna be sad for a little bit here. You might hear them. Oh cool, these guys don't respawn. Well, mostly don't. Huh. Oh, they do, they're just... They're, like, not farmed. I see. When they give you falchions. I was thinking about buying one of those. And so we read it. They take more hits when they are forming than when they are formed. Every time I do that, I'm running out of stamina. Okay. Okay. Alright. I'm not throwing. I'm not throwing. I like how the ground rumbles when you... Do that and huh. I feel like it's hard to do backstabs in this game. Um, by running around behind them. Oh, that spell. Come on, Dennis. Never roll away from someone who's standing right next to you. What is that? Oh my god. <laughs> I was gonna do the same thing to you. <laughs> Come on, armor, Dennis. Okay, we have been invaded too. <clears throat> so, oh, these guys fell down and are doing a Ring Around the Rosy. That is a very weird AI problem. Um, oh. Huh. Giant rest in peace. This is usually where we get Seed of Fallen Giant. And I th in Dark Souls 3, at least, it always appears when you, uh, when you get invaded, which we have. I mean, by a real person. Maybe, f maybe a fake person as well. Um, do we get a... Oh, we got a bastard sword recently. 
Oh, the bandit axe, probably. Which we've read before. Yeah. Um, and we got the ferrets. Um, leather hat with a large brim traditionally used by bow hunters. The hunting goddess Evlana was no goddess at all, but rather a brave and highly skilled bow huntress. Long after her demise, the passing of Lord transformed her into a deity. So we talked about you know, Ferris in the last one, where um, it says he in the description, but the woman that we get it off of is a woman, so I'm not sure whether, you know, Ferris turned into, like, Ferris is a woman, and that is who became this goddess uh, from the lore, or whether or not this girl that we see in the Hunter's Covenant finds Ferris's gear and then becomes so skilled, um, just like Ferris, who ranked against Goth. And then that is who became the hunt, the, the god or whatever, the goddess. And then, yeah, I think these... Yeah, we... The other thing I wanted to read about the Black Hall Mage Robe, now that we know that we're in Finheim, is that it says, Robe worn by hollow Drang Lake Mages. Drang Lake Mages wore a different carb depending on their sex, which is the same thing that it said from uh, Vinheim. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, so I guess it's just these leather things which don't say much of anything. Okay, what else do we have to do here? Um, we have something to do there. We cleared this out. Oh, we only have one Pharos Lockstone. Let's do this. I think we lost connection, so... <laughs> Being invaded by someone potentially invading here will be not easy to do. This is cool too, the dog's gone and then... You kill the pursuer once. much nicer. Uh, I'm not good against the against the gargoyles. But I think I'm gonna try it. So we see this little little person here. Um but we also see, like, tons of them, like, stacked around and whatever. So let's talk to this person. Vulcan. The bell belongs to the princess, it do. Stay back and we slice, slice you to bits. We're not chumps, we shot in there. Pieces. Pieces. <laughs> a long, long, long time ago, the princess she made me. Yes, just like so. Princess made this guy. To guard this bell for the prince's honor. Stay away, foul and dead, or you'll be a goner. <laughs> So, um, I won't talk too much out of turn here, but, so, we learning that the Bell of Alkin, we know about Alkin and Ven, and the Ben of Alkin, Bell of Alkin is here, which she calls for the Prince's Honor, and it's the Princess's Bell. <laughs> you wish to guard the bell, you do. For the prince, for the princess, forever! For true. Yes. <laughs> yes, for you! When you're round the bell, you'll be brought near. When the bell is in trouble, the ring brings you here. Slice, whoever they are, wherever, whoever they are. 
them to pieces for the princess. Glitch there with the text. So So yeah, in Alkin, the ben the princess's bell, and in Ven, the prince's bell. Um, so he also says that they are forever true in love. Well, maybe we will get some stuff from the ring. The twin bell symbolized the bond between the two lovers who could never be united. The bell keepers are their eternal guardians, for that is their love, that is their curse. So, based on what he said with the two things, we can divine that we are in Ven, because he said the princess made me to guard this. Um, so she made a bunch of marionettes to guard the bell, and it says that the Alkin bell is here in Ven, and vice versa, and that this bell is the bell by the prince given to the princess. So we have the bell of Alkin here in Ven. So the uh, Lost Bastille is where Ven was at some point, if not exactly what it was. And Ven could be a region, a kingdom, a city, I don't know, but we'll learn more about that stuff. <laughs> So, so yeah, and it's kind of like a little bit of a Romeo and Juliet thing because Alkin and Ven were, although they were founded by the same people, we have to fight these little licorice men. Okay, um, do I have my shield out? Um, but they, since they were constantly warring with each other. Kingdoms in Alkan and Ven long ago flourished on these very grounds. They were both founded by the same Mayan, but were reduced to rivalry and spite. So they could never be together. And maybe... Ooh, the blue tear stun ring. The ring set with a rare tear stone reacts when the wearer is in danger, temporarily increasing its wearer's defense. Kaitha, goddess of tears, mourns those who have lost loved ones by shedding pure tears of blue. It is said that the stone set in this ring is one such tear. And some skeptic spice. Aha! Uh -huh. Masterless Glencore. Okay, so because we're offline, we got invaded by a generic bell keeper. And I think maybe he's up in. We'll see. Oh wow, that does a lot of damage, and I thought that would have parried. What do they drop? 
Ooh, a bellkeeper bow. These used to be dropped by the malformed beasts, which I think was probably a mistake, because unless those were bellkeepers at one point and then became whatever, but... Um, wooden bow used by the bellkeepers. The bells symbolize forbidden love. The bellkeepers, their faithful guardians, ever ready to annihilate trespassers. They will stand watch forever and ever. These determined, if ill-fated, marionettes... And apparently me. And anyone who joins the Covenant. Okay. Yep. Okay. I'm not good at the gargoyle fight. I'm definitely not good at <laughs> just even getting getting through the marionettes. The trouble is once you've gotten hit to actually like get away. I guess I could summon someone. This person. dark on that. Huh. Huh. I wonder if you can't parry that. either. These guys are just, they don't follow the rules of combat of this game. Uh, chance taking these guys out here once we get up here. <laughs> Masterless Glencore. You have like the Iron Parma and the Zweihander. And I don't know what... You look like you might have uh, a lone armor or something. It's partial lone armor. Okay, you're a small phantom too, so like... There's the bell keeper, invader. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. No one's shooting at me this time. I suppose I should get my souls before I do something I regret. Two bells, by the way, that we have to ring. Similar to another game we know about. Um, I believe that's all the items. There's some other enemy there, but oh, he's out here. All right, let's see if we can. Uh, do this masterless Glencore before you disappear and leave me to fight these guys alone. But I think a distraction here will be good enough. Oops, right into it. Oh my god. I 
should have gotten it there. Also, there's like no nothing given for tails in this game at all, which is really Amazing how like ugh, how overpowered you can be for certain areas. I mean, just completely suck in the next. Just stay alive, Master Glencore, Masterless Glencore. Oh, this isn't good. Oh, that hit me. Oh my god. Okay. I can just take out some of these guys. Just stay alive for a little bit longer. Oh, there was more! They're almost dead. Oh my gosh! Lightning! I don't think I've ever seen that one. <laughs> I'm not saying it was glamorous. I'm not saying it was skillful. But I'm saying that I beat them. That's all I'm saying. With help. Alright. With all the gargoyle of the Lost Bastille, the elaborate stone statues on the belfry mysteriously came to life. Hmm. There's a, uh, something for clerics here, I believe. Southern Ritual Band. One of the secret treasures restored in Aldia raises the number of spells you may attune. This modest looking ring contains very powerful magic. To imagine what unspeakable deeds were performed to create such rings, one only need one need only recall the cruel fate of the residents of Aldia. Well, we will, uh, we will see their fate firsthand. There's Sinner's Rise over there. We're in the upper ramparts. And hopefully there's still a lot of dogs here. Okay. Maybe you don't get invaded? I thought something was different about this place, but I guess not. Kill as many as I can. Because it'll just help. See if that's going to be good enough. Okay, this is effective. Okay, so Vorgel the center is still here. I think this is meant to kind of mimic the Caperdema fight. Vorgles related to the Capra Demon at all? Doubt it. I think he's a little confused. That's fine. This is normally where you would get the Bastille key. Ooh. Dragon Tooth petrified something. And uh something else. 
This is where the button was. Oh no, that was in change of function. Okay. Okay, well let's see, what do we get here? Do we get a toilet? I just completely forgot. What oh bright button. Yeah, and we read these. Um, so let's look at the dragon tooth. A giant dragon tooth used as a great hammer, as solid as a boulder. This tooth is said to be taken from a dragon, but the truth of this claim is unclear. What is certain is that it bears some mystical power, and its wielder gains resistance to magic and fire, which is the case in the first one. In the in Dark Souls 1, you get those resistances as well. I don't know what else we got. Okay. Well, I think that might be it. I mean, there is the, the, uh, I could attempt to do the Dragon Slayer. Um, I don't know what the right way to go is. But we could try the old Dragon Slayer before we end this. Probably like level up 10 times with the amount of souls I have, so I don't know if I should just do that. Okay, these guys come. Can I fight him in here? Okay, good. So, oh, and that other guy comes too. Okay, he goes away good. Praise the sun. Alright. I need some more sublime ball dust. I assume that all of these hide knights are are awake now. And that could be problematic. We we'll also find the these are the old knights. I mean, I suppose they're supposed to look like the Anarlando knights. Oh my god. I am just... I am just not giving this area the respect it deserves. Okay, can I sneak around here? Whoa! They do have that move where they where they pause and then do that quick move. They don't stagger, however. And I can't roll whenever I swing. There it comes. I guess it's kind of nice because you could farm these guys if you wanted all their stuff, which was hard in the first game. Okay. Uh, okay. Come on. Um, let's just 
Take care of you. Oh. <laughs> okay. So far, they're not trapping any of their stuff, though. And I do know that there's a dragon up here. And I do... I'm pretty sure that, like... Pretty sure it's, like, a one-time deal. Like, you get one chance to cross, and then if not, then you're stuck by the flames. Another random divine blessing. I mean, I suppose if you were to assume that this is Anne Orlando, um, then maybe. But this is, I believe, Ven, or, I mean, it's also High, um, you know, because it's a couple different places. But I, I believe that the blue and the moon, we were in the Luna Belfry. I think the moon represents the woman, the princess and the blue and all that stuff and i think the red and the uh, flame and the soul represents the prince which we'll find later um okay well come on can i parry you Pfft, not even a chance <laughs> okay well, at least it gets you down a little bit jump. Alright. Here's my here's my attempt. Oh god. Watch Dragon Parma and a Petrified Dragon Bone. Alright. Shield decorated by intertwined dragons. The black and white contrast depicts the ebb and flow of the fate of all living things living and the serpentine dragons that watch over the march of time. The bearer of the shield will be blessed by great fortune in battle. That could be a reference to the primordial serpents. I guess we could equip it and see. Interesting. I don't know if it's definitive, but... And then we got a dragon bone. Large petrified dragon bone, or bone, commonly called dragon bone, but the veracity of the name is questionable. In any case, this petrified bone houses great power. That's interesting. It might not be a dragon bone. Awesome. I mean, this is another reason to believe that if you were to believe that this is Anne Orlando and you can see the architecture. I think it's a little bit fan servicey. Um, I think the actual lore that exists in here is a little bit richer and more interesting. Um, but yeah, there's, you know, the old dragon slayer who looks exactly like Ornstein. Okay, that was too slow. It's also much smaller.
was the one that I didn't want to dodge on, but... Okay... Ugh... Like that attack. That was bad timing. Okay, don't heal. I just press the button three times. That should have been a little easier for me, but uh, I don't know. It's been a while, I guess. Um, old Dragon Slayer Soul and the Old Leo Ring. Um, the Old Dragon Slayer is reminiscent of a certain knight that appears in Old Legends. So, I don't think that um, that is him. That's my indication to believe that, <laughs> but it's not a strong one. Um, but we do get the Leo Ring. The, the beloved ring of a dragon slaying knight strengthens thrust weapon counterattacks. After many years of use, the ring's face has worn down, but close inspection reveals an engraved lion. There's these eagle headed beings. And there's Tar Gray, who is kind of rude to us. But this will be the end of the episode here. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of items in this game. Uh, I thought we already had that one. Clerics Parma. Uh, Parma used by clerics on pilgrimage. We know that. Clerics went on pilgrimages in the past. Unfortunately, the shield provides very little physical defense. It's more of a lucky charm. A metal great shield, very heavy and requires great strength to handle. One requires strength to handle a great shield, but there. I don't know why these items are here, but um, yeah, this is the guy who deals with the blue sentinels. Um, again, I don't know why he's here. I don't know why he's behind the Dragon Slayer. The Blue Sentinels do sound like the Blades of the Dark Moon, and, you know, Dragon Slayer, and Ornstein, and Lantern Londo. I don't know. It's it's a shame that there's a, there's a bit of fan service when it comes to this, because the actual lore that describes this stuff is so... is I don't want to say so, but it's it's actually interesting. Um, and so the fact that they kind of spun off of the kind of old tropes, I guess, from the first game, it just makes it seem a little bit, I guess it's trying to get people to not care about it. And then, uh, um, when you actually look deeper and take the time to like study the lore, you get rewarded for it. Transient being. This is no place for one such as you. Be gone. You are not needed. In my playthrough, my very first playthrough, I took that as a threat or whatever, or that he was going to do something bad, so I killed him. But all it means is that we need to prove to him in some way that we are worthy of joining the Blue Sentinels. And uh, we will do that soon. Uh, also, this kind of stands in, once you join the Blue Sentinels, this kind of stands in for that arena that was part of uh, Dark Souls 1 DLC. 
and you can fight people and get level up in the covenant through fighting through that so anyway that's going to be all that does uh that's going to do it for this episode um join in next time to learn about all the great hidden lore of dark souls 2 bye